Greetings AP Calculus BC students, Mr. Record here from Avon High School and we're going to take a look at our first example uh, from topic 9.9. .9. That's the tail end of unit 9 and it does get a little bit trickier now that we're dealing with more than one polar curve and we're going to be finding say the area that might be uh, shared by two polar curves which is certainly the case in this example. We're going to talk about a cardioid and a circle. A circle. <laughs> All right, let's take a look. So what we've got going on here, I'll move the camera out of the way so we can see, is the fact that the directive says to find the area of the region common to the two regions bounded by the following curves. And so as you can see, we've got r equal negative 6 cosine of theta and r equal 2 minus 2 cosine theta. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit more just to capture the part of the screen that we really need here. And then I can move my camera down to the bottom. So this is another problem where it's very likely the sketch of the regions will already be provided for you. We don't want you to spend an inordinate amount of time trying to sketch these curves. We want to test your knowledge of calculus, not your knowledge of being able to replicate these two uh, polar graphs. Now, we have to understand what is this area that's common to the two regions. That's going to be very important. So if we look at this and we, we really kind of hunker down on what is the common region, we, we see that the cardioid here graphed in gray and the circle graphed in black share this region in common. That's the only part of the curve that we could say truly that both of these have. Okay, so that will be the area that we're going to try to find. Now, it's up to you then to make a decision about whether or not you feel that there is enough symmetry in this particular region so that maybe you could find half of it and then double that result. I'm a big advocate for doing that because it tends to make finding the boundaries easier. And let's face it, if you've watched enough of these problems by now, that seems to be the challenging part, finding the boundaries of integration. And so it turns out that if you look a little deeper into this thing, it looks like if we just could find the area of the top half of this, which would kind of end right around in here, this orange part, then that could be doubled and thus we have our total area. So there's our preliminary strategy. Now the next thing that we have to think about is how do we incorporate the two polar equations? And there's only going to be one of two different possibilities. You're either going to take two different definite integrals, one that deals with each polar equation, and you're going to either add them together or you're going to subtract them. So if we return to the picture and we start thinking about, let's sweep out this region. Let's start here at the pole. And let's turn on that magic flashlight that I've alluded to in some previous videos. And let's start thinking about what is it that I see when I shine the flashlight on the closest wall, which happens to be the wall of the circle. That's the negative 6 cosine theta equation. Well, by the time I do that enough, when I get to this point right there, I am now going to have to consider changing the wall that my flashlight shines upon. In other words, my flashlight would then want to focus on the wall of the cardioid, which means you want to stop at that point. In other words, this part right here, which I'm going to go ahead and finish my, my coloring, this blue part, all of this area is going to be found by just simply taking a definite integral from this angle measure to this angle measure of the first equation squared. So let's start thinking about that. So we're going to say our area would be starting off 1 half. Now I'm also going to remember to put a 2 out in front because that's going to allow me to mirror that and thus have found 
the area down below as well. I'm going to integrate the square root of the quantity. Nope, not the square root. Sorry, I'm on something else here. You're going to integrate the quantity of negative cosine theta squared with respect to theta. The big question is, what are our boundaries of integration going to be? That's the super tricky part, you guys. And so the way that you would want to figure this out is think about, OK, well, if I'm starting with my good friend, my negative 6 cosine theta, I want to know where is he going to be when I'm at the pole? In other words, when the radius is 0. So that's a great question that we want to answer. So we go ahead and we solve this by dividing negative 6 and then use our basic trig skills. Then we realize that pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 are the two locations of theta when we are arriving at that point. The pi over 2 is going to be the first time that it happens. So pi over 2 is going to serve as my lower boundary here. So now we have to think about, we have to consider, well, when are we going to be up here? What is going to be our upper boundary? Well, if you look, that's going to be one of those places that seems like these two graphs intersect each other. And it's one of those situations where not only do they intersect each other, but we can do this algebraically. In other words, it's not occurring at this very precarious position like at the pole which we've already taken into consideration that point of intersection anyway. So I would suggest that we go ahead and just take a moment and set the two equations equal to each other. If you haven't watched my video over topic 9.8 entitled activity that preceded uh, this particular example, you might want to check that out because it talks a lot about the perils of trying to find polar intersections. So in any event, if we work on this, I can add my 2 cosine of theta over to the left. I can then divide both sides by negative 4. And I'm essentially looking at when is the cosine of theta equal to 1 half at this point. And if I think about those possibilities, I can think about, OK, if I have a theta here and a 1 over 2 adjacent to hypotenuse, I would have to realize that this is a 60 degree angle also known as pi over 3, which that gives us our reference angle. But I don't think pi over 3 is what we want here. And the reason I say that is because our cosine was a negative value. And the mnemonic all students to take calculus tell us what quadrants we're in when we have a positive result uh, for a uh, all functions, only the sine, tangent, and cosine, we know that cosine is going to be negative outside of the a and the c, so that puts us here in quadrant 2 or quadrant 3. So essentially we need reference angles for both of those quadrants, and those reference angles turn out to be, for a pi over 3 reference angle I should say, those angles should be 2 pi over 3, that's the quadrant 2 location. And then, not that we need it, but just so that we know we've acknowledged, the 4 pi over 3 would be the third quadrant. And it turns out that is exactly where we are right here, if you were curious. And, of course, up here. But as I said, if we decide that we're going to double this region, then we don't have to worry about this 4 pi over 3 boundary. In fact, one could make an argument that we might need three integrals in order to evaluate this if we uh, didn't use uh, the symmetry idea. Okay, now what you're going to do. Well, next we realize that we're going to add this to, and I, I apologize, I don't really have a lot of room here to write, so I don't normally like to break apart my lines of work like this, but keep in mind that this addition is just going to tack on to this. We're going to go ahead and do the same thing. We're going to now find the region that's remaining, and I'm just going to switch my flashlight color, say, to red, and now I'm going to pick up where I left off, but shine this light on this limasone wall all the way 
until I get to the very far left of the picture at that point right there. Now, the interest of time, I'm not going to color all of this in because that might take forever. <laughs> so you want to just kind of envision the rest of this orange shape all being colored in in this really nice red so that I can see that I've encompassed that entire part of the graph. So I would have two times, and in fact, I am actually going to make that in red so it matches color-wise. So two times a half, we're going to integrate from, and it seems reasonable to suggest that we're going to start with that lower boundary, 2 pi over 3. We just have to figure out at what point do we end? What point are we over there to the far right? And there's a variety of ways that you can do that. One of the ways is just to maybe use a bit of I don't know, common sense, and and suggest that that seems to be over there to the far left side uh, where sometimes pi is located. And I do see students that sometimes just take a, a stab at finding whether or not that's going to be accurate. So I just say, take that equation, r equal 2 minus 2 cosine, put the pi in for cosine, and we get 2 minus 2, and the cosine of pi, of course, is negative 1. And of course, that would be 4. And lo and behold, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4 is correct. Positive is exactly what we want because pi is already that direction. So we wanted to have a positive r to maintain ourselves on that side. And then, boom, that's going to be our upper boundary. And then the expression that we're going to integrate is 2 minus 2 cosine quantity squared with respect to theta. Now I want to change this plus sign because this is very important to or an equal sign to a plus sign. That's vitally important to this problem because this is a situation where you had two distinct areas an area of region 1 and an area of region 2 that were sort of adjacent butted up against each other that would be added together to find this overall region. The purpose of this video is not to evaluate these two integrals. They wouldn't be impossible to evaluate, but they would both include a cosine squared term after you expanded out each of these and what that would entail is you having to use this trig identity, cosine squared is 1 plus cosine 2 theta, all divided by 2. Um, in my classroom, at my school, we use this formula a lot at the beginning of our BC course, uh, but then we kind of wean our students off of it because really the focus here should be on being able to set up these integrals. Um, if you're curious about what the final answer uh, would be for this particular problem. If we add these together, you can check this on your calculator if you want, but you should get 5 pi um, over 2. Of course, the doubling effect with those 2s actually causes the whole area inside to be just 5 times pi. Anyway, I hope this helps out. We have um, one more example coming up of a uh, polar uh, area of question that involves two polar curves that has a slightly different kind of setup. So we definitely want you to check that out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.